Back when I first played Deep Rock Galactic, I enjoyed playing as the engineer. I liked the turrets, the high-tech laser weapons, and the platform gun for its creative traversal mechanic. In time, I would branch out and explore other roles, from the scout's mobile run-and-gun playstyle, and the mindless carnage of the driller, leaving scorched earth and C4 in their wake. Oh, and the tunnels. Can't forget about the tunnels. And here we come to the subject of this video. It may surprise you to learn that I originally wasn't a fan of the gunner. Shocking, I know. I didn't like the playstyle, thought zip lines were useless, and found the gunner boring to play, among other things. Now before you take out your pitchforks in Z4, let me explain. Back when I first started this game, I said to myself, swore to myself, that I would try every class at least once. And eventually I bit the bullet on that. Literally. I dedicated time to learning everything about the gunner. Their tactics, mechanics, arsenal, etc, etc. And it was then that I realized how much I was missing out on. I came to a greater appreciation of this class and realized that gunners are perhaps the most underappreciated but most valuable members on a team. And we're going to find out why. Now some quick caveats before we continue. Firstly, we will be looking at the gunner as a whole, not just a particular build. Every class can specialize their loadouts to further diversify or expand their role on the team. But generally speaking, every class foundationally is geared for a particular role. Secondly, we will be looking at how the gunner contributes to said roles in the fields of offense, defense, and support. So let's take a closer look at each of these facets of the gunner, starting with offense. Looking at the starter weapons, the gunner has access to a minigun, revolver, and sticky grenades. The minigun offers solid DPS for single or group targets, has a lot of ammo to work with, and has insanely good range. The revolver deals massive single target damage with the trade-off of lower fire rate and less ammo. And the sticky grenade is, well, a sticky grenade. Pretty straightforward. For a starter weapon set, it has all the bases covered. Whether you're fighting long range or close quarters, single or group targets, the gunner has the tools for any situation. And I still haven't even covered the unlockable guns and overclocks. You know what, to save on time, let's just rapid fire through our options here. Gunners can unlock an autocannon, a guided rocket launcher, burst gun, coil gun, incendiary grenade, cluster grenade, and lead burster grenade each of them offering their own style of play. Despite how vastly different each of these weapons function, they all share one thing in common. Adaptability. The weaponry of the gunner can be tooled and refined to fit any combat scenario, any mission, any enemy. And when we take overclocks into account, that versatility is stretched even further. You can make the minigun even more effective at crowd control by adding bullet hell to have your shots bounce between multiple targets. Adjust the Hurricane to trade in missile guidance for a stream of missiles with rocket barrage. Turn the revolver into a proper big iron with six shooter. And make the burst fire gun a primary in its own right with either flechettes or lead spray. The gunner quite literally has over dozens of ways of killing bugs. The versatility provided by their weaponry situates them as the team's most consistent damage dealer who can handle whatever beasties Hoxies throws at them. Now that we've established the gunner's adaptable offense, we can discuss how the gunner is a reliable defender. The type of defense a gunner is capable of revolves around blocking damage entirely and keeping your enemy's focus off the team. The gunner is able to accomplish this with their shield generator. When deployed, it creates a dome that pushes back enemies, blocks projectiles, rapidly recharges shields of your allies, and offers 50% damage resistance to those inside it. This can be modified further to increase its radius, duration, or reduced recharge. Regardless of modifications, the shield generator is an invaluable tool for controlling the battlefield and acting as a lifeline for downed teammates, allowing gunners to tip even the worst of fights in their favor. Now here's where it gets better. An experienced gunner with enough foresight of the battlefield can preemptively use their shields to avoid lethal damage to themselves and their teammates. A classic example of this would be the bulk detonator. In open space, the detonator is less of a threat. You can outrun, outmaneuver it, and avoid the blast radius when it dies. Enclosed spaces, however, can be a deadly combination if you have no escape routes. 
Dropping the shield at the right time can negate most of the damage, leaving you and your team unharmed. I cannot state enough how powerful of a skill this is to master. When you start to get a feel of being able to read combat situations with sufficient accuracy, you realize that you hold the power of life and death in your hand. Ideally, life for your teammates and death for your enemies. Pairing these defensive capabilities with the gunner's offensive skills makes them an ideal bulwark of the team, capable of withstanding damage and dishing it out against their foes. Now the gunner's form of support is a lot more subtle, but that doesn't make it any less valuable. Support from the gunner primarily comes from two things. One we've already covered, the portable shield to resin teammates. The second is their traversal tool, the zipline. Now the zipline isn't robust as the drills, refined as the platforms, or fancy like the grappling hook. It's pretty simple, but sometimes keeping it simple is all you need. The zipline is primarily used as a way of traversing across large chasms or steep cliffs. Yeah, doesn't sound too exciting, does it? But there's a lot more versatility here than meets the eye. For starters, it makes transporting heavy objects easier, specifically heavy loads upward. Now you're probably asking, Baron, we have tunnels and platforms for that. Yes, while that is true, platforms and tunnels take time to set up, and that's also assuming the cave layout will allow for reliable tunnel or platform construction. The only thing the zipline needs to worry about is whether it can reach the top or bottom, and thus has fewer logistics to worry about. The zipline also provides a big advantage in combat, acting as a vantage point for the gunner or their teammates. This also provides valuable protection as most enemies, with few exceptions, are incapable of reaching players on ziplines, and in a pinch can provide some much needed reprieve if things get too dicey. Thirdly, and this is the big one, ziplines can allow you to survive any height. This is a boon that is commonly overlooked because most don't realize the power this has until you experience it for yourself. Regardless of height, grabbing the zipline while falling will stop your velocity, effectively negating any fall damage you would have experienced had you connected to the ground. This opens up more options for you and the crew, allowing for even faster vertical traversal as a means of escape or covering a lot of ground in an instant. In summary, the gunner's zipline is more than the sum of its parts. It brings a lot more value than folks give it credit for, and when used to its full potential alongside the other traversal options, it opens up even more dynamic gameplay. So with the gunner juggling all these roles, where does this leave them within the team? When we look at the other classes, they have very clear strengths and specializations. The engineer provides many tools for defense and area denial. The driller is heavily geared towards offense and close quarter combat and the scout provides valuable support in debuffing enemies and aiding in cave exploration. So, where does that leave the gunner? Now I was stumped on this for a bit, but then it hit me. The gunner is in a figurative and literal sense, glue. Weird analogy, yes, but bear with me here. Okay, let me use this triangle to paint a picture. Each corner of this triangle represents offense, defense, and support each corresponding to their specific class. So where does the gunner go in the triangle? We only have three points. Right in the middle. The gunner is the glue that keeps the entire team working like clockwork. They fill in the gaps of whatever the team might struggle with by providing support in any way they can. Whether it's providing extra firepower for a driller, picking up a scout who took an unfortunate fall, or acting as a bulwark for engineers to give them space to work. This is their strength as a class, being able to wear many hats on the job and switching them on the fly. They are essentially an anchor that keeps things from falling apart. It makes a lot more sense why the gunner is the first class you were introduced to when starting DRG. It provides a foundation for new players to get their bearings on the ins and outs of DRG, from exploration, combat, and objectives. But it also provides enough depth for veterans of said class to excel, get creative, and push its limits further. At the end of the day, the gunner is the equivalent of the phrase, all reliable. No matter the dangers, no matter the mission, the gunner can be relied upon to bring a little bit of everything to the table. They are that longtime friend who sticks with you through thick and thin, 
and simply being around them just makes things a little bit easier to deal with. And in a place like Hoxie's, you couldn't ask for a better crewmate.